everyone, welcome to Live in the D in the Green Room where we give you a quick recap of our show. And today was action packed. Yeah, a lot of stuff for the kids. Yes. Easter's coming. That's right, Carrie Doman from Little Guide Detroit was with us with some great ideas from everything from sweets to activities for the kids to crafts. Easter outfits, crafts, all that good stuff. So check out our conversation. Well, Easter is just a few days away. You may be thinking of colorful baskets, dyed Easter eggs, and the usual Easter candy, which we all love. And today we have some ideas that are a little bit outside of the box and will take your Easter celebration to the next level. Joining us is Carrie Doman, founder and CEO of Little Guide Detroit, to introduce us to some of her ideas that will have your kids hopping with joy this Easter. <laughs> uh, that was good writing on my part, right? Thank you. I'm glad I, I'm glad I got a chuckle. <laughs> That's all you. <laughs> Carrie, it's oh, so good to see you in real life and have I you know. in the studio. It's good to be back and it's thank awesome. you for having me of and course. such a festive occasion at hand here. Yes, indeed. Well, people usually think of jelly beans and peeps for the holiday, but you've got some ideas that I, I think can elevate the way we enjoy, you know, our sweet treats. Yes. Talk, tell me about those. And don't get me wrong, we love the sweet treats. So, it, as she said, elevated in a style. Um, so we went to Love and Buttercream. They have two locations. Uh, throughout Metro Detroit, Birmingham, Royal Oak, and they are one of our favorites. This is one of my favorite things that they do. This is edible paint, and it oh, wow. comes in a in a box, and you can get and it comes with all these different cookies that are white, white, uh, iced, mm -hmm. and the kids can sit there, and they, they give you a uh, paintbrush, and they just paint their own cookies. They decorate their own cookies. I love that. My kids, they tend to end up brown. <laughs> But nonetheless, it buys me about 10 minutes and I will take that and then they, the reward is they get to eat their own cookies. But it's just a really fun activity, something to engage them with. Um, they have so many amazing uh, sweet treats. Uh, these are uh, Rice Krispie treats covered in beautifully colored chocolate, frosting, uh, Cadbury chocolate uh, chip cookies. It's oh, their take on it. So just something that, um, okay, so I have an idea. Okay. I saw this, my friend did this. I am going to take these on an airplane because we're flying to Austin for Easter. Okay. And I'm going to give them to the flight attendants. That is such a sweet idea. It's like, happy, happy Easter. You're working on Easter weekend. And so just a little thank you. You were going to be the star of that flight. Everyone gives it to the people. That's <laughs> yeah. a lot of effort. But yeah. I just thought, you know, the flight attendants. And then my friend said, then they take care of They'll you. They'll take too. great care of you. You know? Indeed. I got three kids. I, I need, need all, all the help I can <laughs> take. Exactly. So, just a little tidbit a little for something. those traveling this weekend. All right. Well, let's not forget about how important the Easter outfit oh, yeah. is. So, what do you suggest to up our look? This it's stuff big. is adorable. I mean, it's so adorable. I went to Petite Cabane, also in downtown Birmingham, um, also online, too. And they, uh, they will help with delivery or pickup. And these, I mean, the little shoes we were talking about earlier, uh, just you can't beat it and it's they have sunglasses. I'm actually if you see there's a fanny pack this uh, Watermelon fanny pack and I'm gonna get that for my nine-year-old niece and the this? nail polish which apparently you take off this nail polish with soap and water when you're ready so that the kids don't have to have the um, oh, alcohol. Yeah. And I love that. So, but they have everything from little little gifts to put in the baskets, uh, books, stickers, all that good stuff. All, that all right. Stuff. So let's talk about, you know, some ideas that you have for kids who will be on Easter vacation mm -hmm. activities, right? That for yeah. kids are on break that could, or, you know, even if the kids are on break, but if they're not on break, it's still something for them to do. Tell us about yeah. those really quickly. So we have break next week. I found this online. It's called Young, Wild and Friedman. We also have a lot of local um, sensory bins, but the sensory bins are hot right now. Um, this is all organic Play-Doh and my son is obsessed with garbage trucks. Also the other one with construction. So, but they have unicorns. They have every style that you would want. Um, and they just play with it. This, I mean, I think this is, do you see all this like fake trash oh, in here? Is that what that is? It's oh, it's so, like recyclables. Yes, and oh. so there's a can. I'm so excited to give it. I've had to hide this for the segment. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm really excited, and hopefully that gives us a little bit of time of play next week when they're off. That'll be exciting. That'll be exciting. So where can people keep up with your ideas for the kiddos? Yeah, so we're at Little Guide Detroit.
DetroitDetroit.com. And we have everything from Easter events. Yeah. There's a lot going on this weekend. Um, and goodies and, and stockings. Stocking. Stocking. Oh Easter basket. Yeah. Stuffers. <laughs> uh, you can find it all at LittleGuideDetroit.com. Awesome. Carrie, thank you so much for hanging out with us. And happy Easter, of course. Happy Easter yes. to you. So I think one of the coolest items that she had were those cookies that you could paint mm -hmm. with the edible paint and create your own design. So let's go from art to art. What okay. do you say? Why Gotta not? have art. All you really need is art. Yeah. Where are we going next? We're going to do, throw some clay and make pottery. I don't know if that's the right word. <laughs> is this should... hitting them tubes? <laughs> hitting them tubes. So right, let's fire up the ceramic wheel. <laughs> You can channel your creative side in a cool way in Ann Arbor. There is a spot where you can actually make pottery with your own two hands. And this isn't just for the experts. Beginners can try it out too. Kay Urist, the owner of Urist Studio Gallery in Ann Arbor, is here to chat with us. Hey, Kay. Hey, good morning. Now, uh, do you have a celebrity impersonator, Patrick Swayze, that uh, sits behind the ladies when they spin, or no? Well, we, we have a lot of students who come to our studio just because they've seen that movie. Well, it's, so it's, it's, it's good for business. Great. Uh, let's start at the beginning. What goes into making pottery or what's called a throwing a pot on the wheel? Well, the first thing that goes into making pottery would be uh, a simple interest in being able to take part in an ancient art form. And also desire to make a pot of your own is like really, another really valuable thing to have and if you want to be able to make your own coffee cup um, to have coffee in the morning uh, that is just so wonderful to be able to have your very own handmade coffee cup those are all things that go into making a pot on the pottery wheel and um, it's a way also for us to be able to find our creative side and we all have that we just don't all know that and I see students discover that every time they come to sit down and try to do it. So what is the oldest known example of pottery in terms of like jugs or, or cups or that sort of thing, containers? Uh, ancient Egyptian pottery, ancient Chinese pottery, tens of thousands of years old. Uh, they've been finding these things in, in architectural digs uh, all over the world. Um, pottery, they say, is one of the very first professions ever, uh, which is kind of amazing to me. Yeah, um, I have to have, so, something, I have, to have oh, something to carry around in your wine, right? If somebody is interested in making something themselves, what type of classes do you offer and how can people sign up? We offer classes um, that are either a one-time try it that we offer once a month on a Saturday afternoon. We also offer six week long class semesters for people who absolutely know they want to learn how to do this. And those are on our website, along with uh, opportunities to uh, do more of a private try it with uh, a friend or a date, and also to do with your team uh, from work. We have try it group events. So there are a lot of opportunities and classes start every six weeks, uh, try it group events, kind of work with everybody's individual schedules. And um, you can go to our website, uh, to our class tab and scroll down to read all about these. All right, you also have a gallery, tell us about that. We do have a gallery here at our studio. Our gallery includes work by myself, by our residents and by our advancing students who are like just amazing our residents work here regularly these are people who uh, some have started out as students others are uh, professional ceramicists and we put in works that are changed around every month every other month we also have a yearly holiday sale where we turn the whole studio into a big giant gallery a 5,000 square feet big and that's really fun so we also on top of the gallery have a tool shop where we sell lots of pottery tools to potters and students so there's a lot going on here okay well real quick where's your studio located and how can people get more information our studio is located uh, in ann arbor on the west side 6087 jackson road and our 
website is uh, uristpottery.com, uh, where you're, you can find all the classes, all the descriptions, all the links uh, to reach us, uh, monthly newsletter, uh, all okay. kinds of ways to follow. Yes. Uh, uh, real quick, a, a team of Israeli, Chinese, and American scholars say it has found ceramic remains in a cave in China's Hunan province that are from 15 to 18,000 years ago. Wow. So you were on the money. Yep. Thanks for joining us on the show and for the history lesson. Yep. Yeah, you're welcome. Thank you for uh, visiting this morning. Look at you with all those historical facts. Well, you know, and history also includes rails, as in railroads that are no longer in use. That's true, and trails, perhaps. Rails to trails? Mm -hmm. Why not? Huh? It's time to get outside and enjoy some spring weather. How about hitting the trails? Do you know about the network of pathways across the state and the country that connect together thanks to the Rails to Trails program? Brandy Horton is the Vice President of Communications with Rails to Trails Conservancy. Good morning, Brandy. Hi, good morning. What are you doing talking to me? Shouldn't you be on a mountain bike somewhere? I wish. Just a couple weeks ago, I was actually out doing some trail mapping in California, but sometimes you got to be behind a desk. <laughs> well, tell us about how uh, these trails uh, were created, uh, how they got to be used now. Give us the background. Sure, no problem. So Rails to Trails Conservancy is the largest trails advocacy organization in the country. And for the past 35 years, um, we've been working with states and counties and local communities to take former railroad corridors and turn them into multi-use trails. And so when the organization started in 1986, there were only a handful of known rail trails across the country. And now there are over 24,000 miles of rail trails, which make up kind of the basis of the multi-use trails, which there are 40,000 miles of multi-use trails, trails in every single state. Um, and I will say that in Detroit, you are within driving distance of 47 trails. <laughs> so there's really, you can kind of throw a rock <laughs> and hit trails near you all. Well, you might kick up a rock with your tire, but what are some of the trails that we can find here across the state? You say there's 47 <laughs> of them within driving distance. Give us a couple, the, a couple, three of, you know, the better ones. Sure, sure, sure. Well, I'll tell you the best one. And on Celebrate Trails Day, which is April 23rd, um, this is one to put on your bucket list. It's the Iron Bell Trail, which is a developing network that's linking about 2,000 miles of trail in the state. There are two routes. You can pick it up right in Detroit and head north and go either around Lake Michigan or up and kind of skirt the bottom part of Lake Superior. So incredible incredible opportunity to really do an epic journey and also um, kind of depart right from right from Detroit and, and really have some fun while you're out there. But Celebrate Trails Day is the day to discover these trails on April 23rd. And we encourage folks to download the Trail Link app. It is a great way to find trails that are new to you or close to where you are, um, is geolocated. So it'll tell you, you know, what's nearby and give you user reviews um, and information to kind of make a choice about what's the best trail for you that day. Is it cheating if you use an electric bike? Not even close. I actually, for the first time, use an electric bike out in California because there's so much elevation gain. Um, it's just a pretty hilly place there. It was in San Francisco region. And it was a game changer because you're still pedaling the whole time, but it just gives you a little extra boost when you need it. So a lot of folks use it if they're you know, towing something, whether that's kids or groceries, or if they're going to go in a place that has a lot of hills, um, or if they just need that extra help for mobility reasons. So yeah, e-bikes are an incredible incredible way to expand kind of trail use and bicycling to even more people. All right, we have exactly 30 seconds left. Anything you want the people at home to know? So go to railstotrails.org where you can get all of the information on Celebrate Trails Day. Mark your calendars for April 23rd. You'll find activities, ideas for things you can do, and we hope you'll let us know what you plan to do so that we can find you out on the trail. Brandy, thank you for the time this morning. Thank you so much for having me, and we'll see you on April 23rd, right? You got it. <laughs> I got to get my e-bike first. I will go bike riding with you if you get an e-bike. You don't have to purchase it. We can rent e-bikes and go on a trip. That's true. A little excursion. Take a good a weather Saturday downtown and just go from Eastern Market to Corktown or whatever. That's right. Get on the DeQuinter. All right, you're on. All right. All right, that guys, thank you so much for hanging out with us for Live in the D in the Green Room. We will see you again soon. You're buying. I'm buying. I got you. <laughs> okay.